Well, yesterday we did the rear suspension, got her a little lower. As you can see, she's riding Cali, or as the Carolina squatters ruined this for us. Now this would be a Carolina squatting. Uh, but anyway, today we're gonna try to do a ball joint flip. I guess while we're in there, we'll do the new brakes. Lame. But bring the nose down and uh, get her a little lower. Well, for once, let's remember to do something that we never do before we lower vehicles. And now we are sitting at 24 inches from the ground to the center of the fender arch. Remember that. Yeah, well, the thing about trucks is, well, they, uh, they tend to be trucks, so people use them. They get dirty. So, first order of business in here is going to be wire brushing all this stuff, so it's, uh, we can even see where the bolts are. Oh, we're getting dirty today. <sighs> well, since we have all new ball joints for this thing, even though I don't actually need to mess with the uppers for what I plan to do today, we're going to put fresh upper ball joints in this thing before we start on the bottom. Really good shape, actually. Just like the upper, the lower looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, dirty, but pretty well, that one's pretty loose. Actually, really loose. So never mind, just the boot's in good shape. Anytime, guys, you're working on one of these torsion bar trucks, always got to support whichever control arm is being sprung by the torsion bar. So on these trucks, it's the lower control arm. Got a jack under it so that if the welds on this shock break or anything, you know, whatever, the torsion bar is going to try to slam this control arm down. Just got it supported. We're good. Plan here is to bring the ball joint from the bottom of the control arm to the top of the control arm. Ball joint flip. Uh, kind of want to do like I did on the Nissan 720 and make a kind of a roll center adjuster spacer out of the old ball joint. So as you can see in stock form, these are just studs dropping through. We're going to replace those with bolts. But what I need to do now is cut this ball joint portion off, just have this spacer. And then we're going to put it here, drop the new ball joint here. One thing I've noticed though is on this one, uh, these RN30 chassis, this ball on the end of the control arm is a little bit too tall for this to sit. So we're gonna grind that down a little lower so this can sit into it. It'll still sit hub centric, but it won't be pushed up so high. Gonna have to take a little bit more out of the middle here so the bolt holes can line up. Well, we made a Ace Hardware run this morning. Um, get some longer bolts since we're going to be doing this roll center adjuster ball joint flip scenario. I'm the caveman, I'm just gonna have to tear this because I can't untie his knot. So. Same grade as original. Just uh, longer, so. Hopefully, I can't even touch this thing. It's still hot from grinding. Gosh. We'll be able to get her up on the truck like that. That should be good for probably a whole inch of drop right there. So we'll grind out this hole just a little bit so the ball joint can set into there and we should be good.
Oh, you put in the uh, struts? Oh, you show, you're you making a video on how to do it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. oh, are you still filming? Uh, at the moment, yes. Okay. I just got this car. Uh huh. And a cable, there, I guess it's called the brake cable. And the brake cable is a. Uh, And just like that, through the magic of editing, we've ground out enough to get this bad boy to sit on there, on the top of the control arm. You might have noticed earlier I was not right in my mind and I was pointing it up, which would have been easier, but uh, that's not how the Toyota works. Ball joint, lower ball joint, points down. So, got to shear the ends off of here a little bit more to clear the knuckle, because right now we got a steering stop that happens really early from hitting those. So we'll trim that back. And uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more in the cup here so that we don't cut the boot. And then this side will be done. I am making do with no flap discs and no cutoff wheels and it's rough. But we're gonna do it. It's fine. Moment of truth. We are one whole inch lower. <sighs> that was a lot of work to only be one inch lower. That being said, she'll probably settle after driving around a little bit. I am skunked. I'm over it today. So, don't think we're going to get to anything else today. I'm just going to go pass out on the couch. All right. We're back. So, the other day we did our ball joint flip. Dropped the front one inch from 24 inch height to the bottom of the fender. We got down to 23 inch. I said, man, a lot of work for only one inch of drop, but it'll probably settle. And guess what? It settled. So now we are at 22 and a half on the passenger side. So now we're at an inch and a half of drop. The driver's side has settled to 22 and a quarter. Not unusual on a torsion bar vehicle, uh, especially old pickup like this. There's probably only ever one person in it, typically. So, driver's weight on the driver's side. Torsion bar sags a little bit more on the driver's side, and it settles more over time. Now, that is also after whomever lowered this truck originally clearly noticed that. Because if you look at the torsion bars underneath... <laughs> You can see the adjuster for the passenger side hangs down lower because someone lowered the passenger side more than the driver's side to make it level last time. So that's all well and fine, but that torsion bar adjuster hook is hanging dangerously low. And if we wanted to lower this side to match the other side, it would hang even lower. So what we're gonna do today is re-index the torsion bars, get them to where we're raising the truck back up to get it to this height or maybe a little lower. And that way we gain our ground clearance and save ourselves from ever ripping the torsion bars out. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is loosening these two jam nuts here and then loosening this preload adjusting bolt until we can get this fork completely off of it completely removing tension from the torsion bar. Then we'll slide it out of the control arm up front, re-index it by, we'll call it three splines today, so that it is then able to go lower and we will raise the preload back to set the height we want. A little bit of Lubert. Ah, we are so low on PB. You can try to free up the two jam nuts from each other, but what happens a lot of time on these things is they just become one. So that's the situation here. They are moving together, so we're just gonna let them continue to move together. Clean up these threads. Well, this is where we're at for some reason. This thing is seizing up. Plenty of lube, the two jam nuts are separated. 
And yet, I fear we're gonna twist this bolt off trying to get that nut to come looser. It's insane. So, here we are with heat. You might find yourself here. Just be patient. Don't break these bolts off. They're kind of hard to find. <sighs> yep. Apparently this is where we are now. Great. You know, it's a very seldom a good time when you got the tap and die set out. Oh, that's where we are. Chase the threads with a die. Visually, they look good. They uh, seem to thread all right, but the question now is, is the lower nut already cross-threaded and stripped on the inside where it's going to just screw these new threads up and ruin itself on the way out? Only one way to find out. We got the bolts over here to the bench. We lobbed off the end twice. Um, so, finally got some clean threads. These are hardened bolts. Uh, I could probably find something local. It'd either be really expensive or not the same grade. So, here's hoping that now that I've made it an inch or so shorter, it's still long enough to do what we need it to do. So with some silver Sharpie, I have marked our location. I'm going to slide the torsion bar out. Then the goal will be to turn it by a couple of teeth and get this arm flatter up in there. So once we're using the preload bolt, it'll pull this back up to height where we want it and get it nice and tucked up in there. So this hits instead of these. So. Very faintly, you can see my marking line here and my marking line here. So we've indexed it over by three teeth. That may or may not be enough. So trial and error. We're gonna do the other side, drop the other side, drop this side back down and uh, maybe cruise it around the block a little bit before we say for sure that we're there. <sighs> well, fortunately, since the other side fought us so much, this side has so far, still time to change. So far gone much easier. Now, on the passenger side, we went with three, maybe four teeth uh, here. We only did two splines different because remember this side was already lower and the hook wasn't adjusted as low. We're just doing this on good faith. So this side should be easier to have tucked up in there safe away from dragging and ripping off. Cause I accidentally learned this trick about re-indexing torsion bars by backing into a friend's driveway, hooking this hook, getting stuck, pulling forward and ripping the entire torsion bar out of the truck. Then with only one small jack, trying to finagle it all back together, just threw the torsion bar back in however which way I could, found out that I ended up jamming the preload all the way back up and the truck was just as low as it used to be. Something clicked, magic, wow. Now, if you do find yourself with a truck newer than 83, the splines actually have a keyed spline that isn't cut out. Uh, those torsion bars do fit these trucks. You just have to, with a grinder, cut that key out and she'll slide right in. So, FYI. Oh, that's very low. 
<sighs> so, we're gonna have to say ride height. She's uh, super low right now. So, that's gonna be fun. It'll be up and down, up and down, tighten, tighten. Here. Trial and error. Okay. Getting close. Tell you what, this thing must really want to be low. It hasn't scraped. The uh, Pittman arm is not snagging on the tension rod, which is a byproduct of the pole joint flip slash roll center adjuster. Because if we were anywhere near this low, without doing that, the Pittman arm would be snagging on the tension rod. Um, but this thing didn't even scrape pulling out of my driveway. That being said, uh, this is kind of more to make the spring settle than anything. I'm sure we'll have to torsion them up a little bit more. Uh, but we got another half inch of drop out of the passenger side. Went ahead and set the driver's side an inch, not an inch, a half an inch higher than the passenger side since once again, you got the fat ass of the driver always sitting over here, squatting her down. So, uh, hopefully, that all settles out and we uh, have a pretty decent ride um, and ride height. So right now, still drives really good. Um, hasn't bottomed out the suspension, hasn't bottomed out any hard parts on the ground, which is really blowing my mind. And uh, steering's still nice and easy. So, we are pretty much in the green right now. We got a nice low truck, and everything about it is just working. Man, it doesn't scrape anywhere. This is insane. Got up to the dollar store here. We'll park it. Run the tape measure again. Doggy hair on the camera. So sitting here watching these videos of the in car here and man this headliner is gross got to looking at this sun visor well that's pretty nice oh oh wait what what all that came from just that half of this sun visor so just did the brakes uh already got the thing up in the air i really don't want to do this but hey we're here we might as well like I said, the other day when we were at the shop, did the C-notch, uh, I noticed that the idler arm was wildly worn out. As you might imagine, <clears throat> that has pretty negative effects on your alignment and tire wear, braking, dartiness. So, new one has arrived. We're going to throw that on there. We're already here, right? Why not? So, idler arm, it's held on by three bolts. They are through bolts through the frame, nuts on the other side. You don't have to take that one loose. We just gotta take this cotter pin out and that nut. Now, there's a special tool for that. It's a Pittman arm and idler arm puller. It's pretty cheap. You should get one. It definitely beats the heck out of trying to hammer that stud back through. So. Should be pretty quick. Just don't want to do it. Definitely a 17. Now, we could just give her a whack, but we'll just use the right tool. Conveniently, the tool is also a 17. It's also hexed on the top for ratchet. I've got my electric ratchet out, so let's run that. Ah, she walked. Dang it tools walking again. Maybe the right tool was the wrong choice. No. My right tool is too wide. There we go. Got my backside wrench over here on and wedged up against the motor mount bracket so we can give her the beans down there. Fortunately, I'm tired and I'm pretty much out of beans. Didn't eat lunch today. 
or breakfast. Yep. Three. That is, I mean, absolutely destroyed. Sheesh. Can't even turn this one. Gotta turn it around 180 degrees. Right. That was that. Now we gotta throw the nut back on. She'll be done. 